Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, August 16th. Okay, so we have the moon in Capricorn energy here all day. And of course, that puts us in a little bit of a more serious, more somber mood and attitude. We're focused on our goals. We're focused on our to-do list. We are acting logically and practically in order to cross some things off of our list, put them behind us so that we can get on to the good stuff. Now, we are definitely in a time where the energy is building. We have to go back to that Mars and Jupiter conjunction here on Wednesday. The energy is picking up ever so slightly until we hit this full moon in Aquarius on the 19th, which also happens to be the Jupiter square Saturn. I talked a little bit about that in the astro class over on my Patreon. There is a second parter to that particular episode, to this particular astro class coming at you here in a couple of days. But we are in this buildup of energy, of intensity, because things are about to change in a big way. You should be feeling something strange in the air. And this is, again, the intensity being kind of, you know, pressurized so that we can hit this ground running. We can make some progress right out of the gate. And the Capricorn energy helps us to get focused on what needs to be done, what loose ends need to be tied up so that we can start building towards something new. So there are 13 different aspects taking place here today. 11 of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in this Capricorn energy going to be making a positive interaction with Saturn. Saturn rules over the Capricorn energy and of course Saturn being the Lord of Karma ruling over roles, responsibility, systems, foundations, structures. Saturn is retrograde in Pisces energy, trying to close out a 30 year cycle, trying to deconstruct the old ways of doing things, the old ways of believing in thyself, the old way of just kind of operating in a reality that, of course, is no longer a vibratory match to who it is that we now are. Of course, we just busted out this new version of self. We're in the adjustment period. We're in the reevaluation, the processing period with all of these retrograde planets in order for us to rearrange, restructure our physical realm according to the changes that we've already made in our inner realm. So of course, the moon interacting with Saturn in this way helps us to get focused on our roles, on our responsibilities, on our commitments, on our obligations. We have to wrap up work before we can have some fun. There are some fun things that we would like to be doing. There are some tasks and chores that we would prefer to be doing over some others, but the weight of the world, the responsibilities that weigh on us with this Capricorn energy means that we have to address the work. We have to do the tasks, the chores. We have to honor our roles, responsibilities, and commitments first before we can get on with the show. Now, Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger, is coming into an exact square with Saturn. So again, I did touch on this square, this energy, these, let's call them building days towards the Saturn-Jupiter square off on the 19th under that full moon in Aquarius. We touched on this in that astral class. So again, for my Patreon subscribers, of course, you can access that astral class. You can preview some of the free content if you're not a Patreon. And of course, if you want to just download it per episode, that is now an available option over on my Patreon. But Mars getting into the boxing ring, squaring off with Saturn. And again, a square is a growing pain. It does highlight tension and conflict where it is that we're having struggles, letting go of the old and embracing and embodying the new. There is a little bit of a flashback to November of 2023. That is the last time that Mars and Saturn kind of interacted. Um, but at the same time, a lot has changed since then. We have changed since then. Our plan, our path, our trajectory has changed since then. We are finding ourselves at a choice point, at a decision point that, again, each and every single day is becoming a little bit more and more clear. But the old vision, the old realm, the old version of self is still lingering. It's still very hard to kind of, you know, cut the cord with and be a clean cut away from. 
And so again, there is this tension and conflict kind of showing us where we're facing some obstacles, where we're facing some blockages, especially preventing us from actually getting to where it is that we want to end up being. And again, kind of derailing us from the happier things, from the more, let's call them pleasurable things. Because again, Saturn is all about that work. The moon in Capricorn, then going to square off, get into that boxing ring with the north node in Aries energy. Of course, that north node is trying to get us on the right path to move on, to move forward. And the issue here is that there are too many loose ends of the past to actually clean up. Too many roles, responsibilities, commitments, obligations that we need to fulfill first before we can go on, move forward and initiate something new. So the conflict here is because the weight of the world, the responsibility, the duty that we feel to kind of, you know, be of our word and bring an ending a closure to some of these chapters that we are very anxious to put behind us so that we can start building towards the new, that is a power struggle. And as you've been kind of exploring the power struggle, we talk about Pluto. Pluto is retrograde in Aquarius energy, highlighting the power struggle within. And this is a point in time where again, the let's call it more mature part of us knows that we have work to do, that we have to do our tasks and chores, that we have to complete certain, let's call them topics and themes in our lives before we can go on and start building towards something more fun, something more in alignment to what it is that we want to be doing. And so again, there's part of us that just wants to throw caution in the wind and say, screw it. I don't want to do all of these things that I've committed myself to do. But of course, our higher self giving us that swift kick in the ass, we have to honor our commitments. We have to be of our word. And that means focusing in on what we have to wrap up instead of focusing on what we actually want to begin. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, who was retrograde, mind you, now in Leo energy, so the heart and soul of the zodiac, is making a very positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, who, of course, is in Gemini energy. Now, Mercury rules over the Gemini energy that Jupiter is currently in. And any time that we have the great magnifier, Jupiter, coming into contact, especially in a positive way, with the ruler of the mental plane, you best believe we are starting to see the bigger, brighter picture. We are more optimistic. We are more confident. We're focused on all of the good, all of the silver linings. We are coming up with some clever ideas, some out-of-the-box solutions to some long-term standing problems. We are analyzing our lives, our situations, our relationship dynamics, our finances, our goals, our dreams from a different lens a different perspective. If you've been listening to me for any amount of time, especially over the course of the last couple of weeks, you would know that when Mercury was in his rulership in Virgo energy, even retrograde, that was about just kind of gaining clarity, gaining insight, analyzing, critiquing, if you will. Um, once we moved back into that Leo energy, the heart space, now we're trying to kind of see how we feel about some of the ideas that we've arrived upon, some of the ideas that we were kind of percolating on, we now have to bring emotion to the vision that we kind of arrived at. So of course, Jupiter is the hype girl, really. He turns the volume all the way up on what we're thinking, what we're feeling. And right now we're trying to get our heart and head in alignment. We're doing a good job of doing that. We're focused on the positives. And this is just kind of revealing a lot more clarity, a lot more detail to the greater grander vision. We have the moon in Capricorn energy, making an awkward interaction with the sun, who of course is still in this Leo energy. Anytime that the sun and the moon are coming together, there's going to be an emotional realization, an aha moment, an epiphany, if you will. We're going to realize what it is that we want, we need, we desire, what we have to wrap up in order to actually have the space cleared out for us to pursue something new. Again, the moon in Capricorn wants to focus on business, wants to focus on what needs to be done, what needs to be wrapped up, while the sun, again, is trying to charge us up with boldness, with bravery, with courage, with spontaneity, with action, with excitement, in order for us to start chasing our new goals, new visions, new dreams. The tug of war, definitely going to be highlighted. And again, we're thinking 
yes, very long term about what it is that we want to do, but we're also feeling our way through trying to piece together that particular vision. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Uranus, the great awakener who is in Taurus energy. This is going to bring some insight. This is going to challenge our existing perspective, help us to think outside of the box, especially when it comes to our to do list to let's call it some of the long term problems that we've been banging our head against a wall about. This is going to just kind of give us a little bit more perspective, a different lens to kind of take a good look at some of the situations and circumstances that we wish we could fast forward through and just see where it is that we could adopt a different perspective, therefore a different attitude, and definitely try to fast forward through some of these heavier, slower, tougher parts. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Mercury. So again, our heart and head not on the same page now. Why? Well, because we have to kind of put I'm going to say put ourselves on pause of thinking about, you know, getting all charged up and excited and inspired to move on, to do big things, to kind of, you know, go on this new quest, this new adventure. Why? Because we still have loose ends to wrap up of the past. The sun in that Leo energy that we just interacted with is putting us in a situation where we're so hyped up about all of the fun things that we're really making ourselves in a sadder state than we need to be because we can't go on to that right now. We have things to do. We have the not so nice tasks and chores that we need to address before we can get on with that fun, with that more enjoyable path, that more enjoyable direction. But at the same time, there's no point in continuously, you know, baiting ourselves or trying to encourage ourselves to think about the future when that is putting us in a situation to want to abandon the present, want to abandon the roles and responsibilities, the obligations, the commitments that we've already made, which means that Mercury being in this Leo energy, yeah, we're heart and head aligned about the future, but we can't think about the future until we do our tasks, we do our chores. So it's almost, again, like the power struggle is being highlighted within us. Our heart is in this present moment focused on the past, what needs to be wrapped up, what we need to kind of bring a closure to, while Mercury, who is retrograde, who is reflecting back, is only doing so to help inspire us to get shit done so that we can move on to the parts that are actually a lot more fun, a lot more pleasurable, a lot more enjoyable. The moon is then going to trine Venus. Venus is the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in Virgo energy, thus the trine. We're working with earth on earth here, which means there's a huge focus on our physical realm, on, you know, our day-to-day -day lives, our routines, our relationships, our money matters. And emotionally speaking, we are feeling, because again, there is, you know, Venus is all in her feels. The moon is all in her feels. Virgo energy is analyzing Capricorn energy is kind of wanting to reflect on where it is that, you know, we're feeling stuck. We're feeling like we were in parameters or in boundaries or in circumstances or still currently are that is preventing us from moving on, from building towards something new, from actually doing something exciting, actually doing what we need to be doing in order to fix, heal and repair our heart space first and foremost. So although this is a trine and this is going to illuminate for us what we want, what we need, what we desire, what we need to fix, what we need to heal, what we need to repair, it's also putting into perspective where we feel blocked and challenged, where it's almost like the universe has pressed pause on our fun, on our excitement, on our growth. Of course, that's not the case. That hasn't happened, but it's definitely going to highlight where we're feeling blocked, where we're feeling that stagnant energy. The moon is then going to make a very tough interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. This isn't going to feel good. This is going to throw us in a negative Nancy narrative. This is going to suck the optimism, suck the confidence right out of us. The Gemini energy that Jupiter is in is going to highlight the division of self. Capricorn energy, typically speaking, is very serious, very somber anyways. We have a hard time staying out of the negative Nancy narrative most times with this moon in Capricorn. And so this is emotionally speaking, going to start speaking a lot of fears, doubts, and insecurities into the plans, into the goal, into the vision, and into the dream. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Neptune, Neptune, who is retrograde in his place of power in this Pisces energy. This is going to remind us 
refresh us, renew us in our soul, in our spirit of our vision, of our goal, of our dream. This is like an intuitive download, if you will. Like, yes, okay, when you get down to the logical, practical, nitty gritty, of course, we're going to run into obstacles. But once we get past those obstacles, look at how good life could be. Look at what we're building. Look at what we're creating. Look what we're bringing to life. It's that kind of vibe. The moon is then going to sextile beautiful interaction with Saturn, the ruler of this Capricorn energy, who again is retrograde in Pisces energy as well. This is a growth. This is a nudge in the right direction. It's almost like we're not really angered or frustrated or agitated by the roles and responsibilities, by the obligations, the tasks, the chores, the commitments. Now we're kind of like bossing up. We're rising to the challenge. It's like we're taking on a better mood, a better attitude of let's get shit done so that we can wrap this up, put this behind us and actually start building towards things that make us happy. Things that bring us more a sense of joy, a sense of happiness, a sense of exploration. The moon is going to make a very tough interaction with Mars, though. It does kind of make sense that we're kind of flying high for a bit. So the negative narrative has to kick in. And this is going to highlight where it is that the restlessness, the ants in our pants are literally biting our butts so badly that we're having a hard time trying to convince ourselves to not take action, to not make moves. We're being illuminated to the frustration that we're currently feeling of not being able to move forward in the way that we want, having to look back instead of looking ahead, having to build in this anticipation, this inspiration, this excitement in our headspace instead of actually acting it out. And again, where Mars rules over our physical energy, our physical action, he's in Gemini energy, which is about planning and strategizing in the mental plane, not necessarily taking action through the physical form. So there's a lot of frustration here. We're definitely feeling those particular, let's call them blockages, challenges, obstacles, because Mars wants to exert himself physically when realistically speaking in the Gemini energy, the best that he can do is to channel that energy into the mental plane, thinking very carefully, very detailed, very thoroughly about the plan, about the strategy that we eventually will be taking action upon. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon and the sun coming together in a beautiful interaction. So again, the sun and the moon coming together is always going to be an aha moment, a light bulb moment, an emotional awareness of what we want, what we need, what we desire and where we want to go from here. So there is this long term goal, this long term vision, this long term dream that we are excited to take action upon. There is this want, need and desire to start building towards that. And of course, the sun shining very brightly in this Leo energy. It is a heart activation. It's something that our heart, our soul, our higher self is calling us to do, calling us to pursue. But we're acting out of our higher self where maturity is concerned, where patience is concerned. The Capricorn energy knows that it is perfectly okay to struggle in this present moment as a short-term sacrifice, as long as it means that there are going to be some long-term gains.